we have it all down. Uh, update 6 for the Atari VCS has uh, come out. Uh, all the backers, all the Atari fans would have the same information I have. So I'm just putting this out there for um, anyone who's unaware of what's happened. Okay. So there's a there's a, a lot to go over. It's a big update. Uh, it's a Q and A session with Rob Boy, the um, Atari VCS system architect. Okay. Uh, so yeah, now um, there's gonna be more Q and A's to come. This is the fourth one. Okay. Uh, there's a lot to go through. So um, we'll get to it now in a minute. All I can say is um. Really happy that this Rob Wilco is in charge. The things that he's doing is making it is making the Atari VCS even better. And uh, like, uh, I can't wait until July 2019 to get my Atari VCS. You know, we've been waiting for a long time for Atari to come back, and we stuck through. We stuck with them through thick and thin, the good times and the, and the bad times. You know, and I'm gonna continue to do so. Until until the tie have ripped me off and pissed me off, that hasn't happened yet. Not to me, okay. So that's my opinion, okay. So to all the haters out there of a tie, uh, I'm sure you have your reasons, and no will say or do will change your mind. So uh, you know this is reality. This is not, I'm not making this stuff up. So if you hate it, if you don't believe it, that's your that's you, okay, so like, this is reality, this is what's happening right now, okay, so this is uh, update 6 of the Atari VCS, okay, I just want to say, uh, well done to all my fellow Atari fans out there, that are my age, that grew up with Atari, that stuck with Atari, and the backers like me, because we're the ones that actually made this happen, if it wasn't for us, there would be no Atari VCS, you know, because Atari are making it to suit us, what we say, it's what's gonna happen. You know, that's why Atari chose in the go go. So our input directly reflects of what's gonna happen with the Atari BCS. And this QA session robbery is a clear indication of that. You know, the questions that we asked are being answered. And this isn't this is just the fourth QA session. There's a long way to go until the Atari BCS is finished and it's ready for us to, to enjoy. So there's a long way to go, so patience you know, to, to the people that, that are still saying now that it's a scam to fake, the proof will come eventually, things take time, okay, but this is reality, it's going to happen, it's going to get made, it's going to get released, okay, so if you still hate it, if still, if all the people out there, RGT85, Dreamcast Guy, Tips81, um, Smash JT, all these people that are saying no to it, hot take, all these people, this is fact, this is reality. So if you still hate it, if you still think it's a scam, there's nothing we can do or other people that believe in it, that want it to happen. The true Atari fans, okay? So, okay. <clears throat> so this is a big update. Up, this is a update six, okay? So. Like, uh, I can't wait for the for the, for the Atari VCS come out. Um, there's a lot to go to, but the main things that, that um, the main things that that got my attention straight away was that there's there's going to be upgrades to the architecture to the specs. We before the uh, the Atari VCS had four gigabytes of RAM. Now it's going to have eight gigabytes of RAM, making it as as powerful as a PS4 or as an Xbox One. Okay. That's the first thing that impressed me. You know what I mean? So, okay, so. So. <clears throat> just bear with me for one second. See, the stuff is on my phone here, so. Uh, anyone who um, uh, backed the Atari VCS. If you win the goal, I will have the same information we have, you know. So I'm just putting it out there, you know. And I say again, I'm so happy, I'm so pleased that there's a Thai fans out there like me that supported it and wanted it to happen. Well done, fellas, it was just that may not happen, you know. But still a long way to go.
you know, the physical proof will come, fellas, okay? Okay, because that's one thing the now sayers, the, the people that are saying now saying there's no proof. This is, these are all just words, you know, but it will come, it'll happen, this is reality. So if you, if you still don't, if you still won't accept that because you hate it, if you hate Atari, if you hate the Atari VCS, whatever. But we love it, you know, so. Here we go, So this is update 6 for the Atari VCS, okay? Posted by Atari, July 15th, 2018, 10.38am, okay? Okay. Q and A with Atari VCS system architect Rob Way. Okay. Right. Hi everyone. We are excited to finally bring you today today's Atari VCS update, and I am so glad you are on this journey with us. Okay. As you as you surely have noticed, we have not been very vocal lately, mainly because we have shifted into full uh, on production mode. Okay, so they shifted into full on production mode. Okay, now here, here's something cool as the king of rock and roll might say, a little less conversation, uh, a little more action, please. That's classic, that's obviously taken from the king himself, Elvis. That's a okay with me. If the king of rock and roll, that's fucking awesome, obviously. Uh, Atari VCS and uh, their fans of Elvis, which is a okay, but me, that's good. But um, the Atari VCS team is working hard to do all is needed to make this product and platform truly amazing. We have said it over and over, and want you all to keep hearing. It. We are committed to making to, to making sure. Every Atari VCS backer and user gets a game and entertainment platform that you will love. We will not let you down. As promised, we gave you the backers and believers the floor and had you submit questions for Atari VCS system architect Rob Wood to answer. Which is true, you know. Because uh, a lot of the questions we asked showed up here, you know. Yeah, so yeah. We, we received so many great questions that we had to consolidate them and focus on the most popular uh, ones that Rob and the VCS team felt most comfortable answering at this point, you know. Uh, so, th like I said, this is the fourth Q&A. There's going to be more to come, okay? Um, right. So... But, uh, but what we can share and discuss here and now is exciting to us and we hope it will be for you too. A few of Rob's responses actually answer some of the additional uh, questions we didn't choose to showcase. So that's how they hold, oh, oh, up front they are about it. Um, they, Rob is answering questions that I tell you, um didn't really want them to answer, but he did anyway. You know, so there you go. You know, there's no fucking nothing there. You know, it's, 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 it's awesome. Okay. Uh, as the project progresses, we'll keep coming back to answer even even more of your questions. Okay. Um, as you know, the Atari VCS is a living and and evolving project. Uh, uh and that. Uh, is manifest in some of Rob's uh, very thoughtful and detailed answers, you know. Uh, so, like, you know, what, what Rob says is going to be in the Atari VCS because he's a system architect. The team really is listening to your suggestions and taking action where possible. So we hope you are excited to dig in as we are to share. Without further ado, please hit the link below for our first Q&A session with Rob Roy of Atari VCS. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the, into the, um, so that's, that's all that there that I just, re that I just re read, we, okay. Okay, just so you know, I'm not making shit up. We, okay. See Rob Roy, system architect, we, 
that's all that's all the stuff in black is the stuff that they really mean that's why they highlight it in black you know so i'm gonna go into the q a session okay awesome stuff you know we wrap away on board it's gonna be even better than i thought it was gonna be the Atari vcs okay so here we go look the Atari vcs we q a one we look now there's still the the, the nose hairs out there it's gonna take time patience it will happen and then you have all the proof you need but, um um okay so here we go my name is rob boy i'm the system architect for the Atari vcs project the, the Atari community has asked some really great questions about the new vcs and i hope the answers um uh, I, I hope the answers some of your more technical ones about the project today because he's an engineer you know we really see that's what i'm saying he's this guy is the engineer okay so this is the guy that knows the what the, the inside of it is going to do what the specs are going to do and what they want to do okay so the see michael arts is the um he's the uh, he's the marketing guy he's there to to send out a message and he did rob Wood is a system architect he's the main man He's the main engineer, okay. So, okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. We we really look to the Atari community as as about as both a source of inspiration and collaboration for the Atari VCS, and look forward to an ongoing dialogue over the next several months as the development process unfolds. Okay. Okay. Then it showed a, black, a picture of the black onyx uh, at AVCS. Now this is the one that was shown centipede and Tempest 4000. Okay. If you believe it or not, that's, that's the one that we said earlier. That's the one. Now this is not the finished uh, version. But this is the one that was playing Tempest 4000 centipede. Okay. And this is the one that they were using to show off the UX, the 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 UI. Okay, now if if you don't if you don't still don't believe it, you still think that's a scam. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, wait. So here's the first question. Wait. Please tell us about some of your past projects. How do you plan to bring what you've learned into the Atari VCS? Okay. Okay, and the now he answers is. His answer was, we worked on the system architecture of the original Xbox, of the original Xbox nearly 20 years ago. And it was a pivotal moment in game consoles, which it was. Prior to the Xbox, uh, consoles only played games and they used custom esoteric hardware, which were difficult but fun to program. Now you put, you, now you put both fun in brackets, because you, you know, because he likes a challenge, you know. It was hard to, to, to develop games for the Sega Saturn and stuff and other consoles, you know, but he says he, 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 put, he, put, he puts both fun in brackets because he likes a challenge. He likes, uh, you know, to program, okay? So, um, for the Xbox, we used PC hardware. We had a full operating system, HD video, internet access, online play, and apps that weren't games. Because before that, like, uh, uh, the Xbox was really was a pivotal moment now because now everything has apps and stuff. But before the Xbox, all you had was game consoles. You didn't have apps or anything like that, which is standard now. You know, yeah. So uh, yeah, um, we, uh, so he says the the biggest thing we took away from this at that time. Uh, had to fight for within Microsoft is that the game console is not a PC on your TV. That's what he was saying. That the Xbox is not a PC on your TV. The game console. Okay. Uh, the console is all about the streamlined experience. It's, it's all based on known hardware for both users and developers. Years ago, this was just about the quality of the games, and today games are still the most important part. But being able to watch Netflix or listen to Spotify, while receiving notifications from your um, 
and my friends all adds to the overall experience and increases the amount of time you spend within the within the given ecosystem, which is true. You know what I mean? Because, you know, like, we, we use YouTube, I listen to Spotify. Uh, I don't play games all the time, but uh, it gives me more something to do in the system. There's more options, there's more things to do, you know? Cause, yeah, and, uh, and before, like, with the Xbox One, uh, you had to snap on that feature where you could watch YouTube and play a game at the same time. A feature which I fucking loved, and I'm, I'm pissed off that Microsoft took that away. You know, because all I do is two things at once. Or, you know, we can use Internet Explorer when I'm playing a game. I mean, I hope uh, Microsoft bring the snap on that feature back. You know, but anyway, uh, he, he continues, right? Now, this is the first question, right? The Atari VCS will in the Atari ecosystem is certainly not just a PC on your TV. If you want a PC on your TV, you can already do that. However, if we turn this problem on its head and assume that the Atari VCS is already connected to your TV, then we might not have the option to use it as a PC if that's what the user wants, which is what exactly what we want. I'm happy as Larry Day said that. You have the option. You have so many options with the Atari VCS. You can use it as a PC, as a game console. There's no... There's no... Um, uh, you can do... More with the Atari VCS. Okay, that's that's one of the re- that's one of the reasons why I like it. I can use it as a PC because I've ne- I've never had a PC because I never had the room for a PC and I couldn't afford a PC. But now we have it. We can use the Atari VCS as a PC if we want to. See, it's open. It's flexible. You know, you can use it any way you want. Okay, so that's awesome. I mean, that's good. You know, lovely, great. I can't wait. Okay, so um. Other bespoke consoles, um, sorry, I mean the other be bespoke console platforms, don't offer this, and the Atari VCS looks much better in your family room than a, a typical PC, which we agree with. I think the Atari VCS looks sweetly. You now I'm getting the 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 um the collector's edition with the wood panel and all. it's streamlined, it's slick, it's small. Whereas if certain PCs are. are Big huge fucking yokes like that, like CD drive and all that. But that's my own opinion. I, I just prefer how the Atari VCS looks to a big bulky uh, desktop PC, you know. So, on the technical side, the biggest takeaway from working on other platforms is to openly embrace developers and not enforce sometimes already strict usage models by strict APUs. In the spirit of being, in the spirit of being open. Atari wants the VCS platform to give developers all the freedom they need to be creative. Your solution to a problem doesn't have to make sense to me. It just has to make sense to you. Which is awesome. We'll support you as much as we can to make um, sure your solution works. One thing you will never hear from us is, why do you want to do that? You'll never hear that from them. Why do you want to do that? If you want to... Uh, uh, emulate and um, 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 side the hedgehog or whatever they don't have to, why did you do that if, if they, see there's no barricades with, with the Atari VCS if you want to do it they won't judge it you know what I mean they won't put up barricades but if something do, uh, you can mess around with the UI customize it any way you want and the Atari won't judge it they won't say why did you do that if something doesn't work it doesn't work you know what I mean it will work, you know. Experimentation is a healthy thing, you know. And putting up barricades only pisses off people to, to, to try and hack something. But with the Atari VCS, it's open, so you don't have to hack anything. If something doesn't work out because you tried it, it just won't work. But nothing will happen, you won't get judged or anything, which is an awesome fucking thing, you know. You know, because that's why the, the Xbox 360 was modded than everything else because Microsoft put up all these fucking barricades. And that's just enticed people to hack it and do it anyway, and they did. You know, so that's, that's what that means, which, which, which is awesome, you know, fucking... Yeah. So they say, you, you, you won't hear from us, why do you want to do that? You can do it if you want to, you know. So, so that's the answer to the first question, you know. Okay, now things get more... It goes on to the um the technical specs, right? 
and the upgrades and everything else. Now look at said fellas, this is reality, okay? And now there's no physical proof right now. It ha it's not even built yet, but it's it he explains right here what's going to happen. And there's going to be more Q&As to come, okay? So this is the second question, okay? I'll let you read that for a second. Right. Right. Now, Medium is its name of the website that, like, as soon as, as you hit the link in, in your email, it bring you to this, like, Medium, wherever that is. Right? Medium is just an app, I guess. Okay, so can you give can you give more details or updates on the Atari VCS hardware specs? Uh, any possibility you and the team might be considering and are able to share news of any upgrades from the currently published hardware? Okay, so you know wait on the Indiegogo campaign page as the specs there. But this is the update. It's updated. I mean it's they've up upgraded it, right? So he answers the question. The VCS hardware will be powered by AMD Bristol Ridge family APU with Radeon R7 graphics and is now going to get 8GB of unified memory. This is a huge upgrade from what was originally specified and unlike other consoles, it's all available. We won't reserve 25% of hardware resources for system use. That is fucking awesome. That means like the whole power of that will be devoted to the system, the games. Every, there's, no, there's gonna be no sacrifice. You know, it's just this is gonna be fucking awesome. You know, now I'm not an engineer, but uh, but uh, it was four gigabytes. Now it's eight gigabytes, which put on par with an Xbox One and PS4, which is fucking awesome. And like I said, uh, unlike other consoles, it's all available. We won't we won't reserve twenty four percent of hardware resources for system use. Fucking awesome. That's fucking brilliant, you know, like, I can't wait. The entire VCS is gonna be awesome. I know I keep saying it, but like, this is awesome. This is awesome. Um now I know there's no games yet available or any fucking but they will fucking come, fellas. Trust me. With no barricades, with these sort of specs, it's better than the fucking switch. But a system is not a great system unless it has great games, and we understand that. Now, the Atari, the Atari VCS may not get great games, but it'll get games, trust me. People will make their own games, you can get, you can emulate games. It'll be a success for us, trust me. Now, um... Okay, so he uh, continues, we, that is in the end of it. He, we looked at a whole series of AMD APUs, and when you factor in cost and term terminals in addition to performance, the Bristol Ridge family came out on top. Now this guy's an engineer, over 20 years doing it, he's not bullshitting when he says that. We, uh, terminals are, are a much bigger deal in a consumer product than in a typical PC. Yes, on paper, the, yes, on paper, the Ruizen family is technically better than, is, is technically better but without increasing the cost and having a horror thermal capacity, a Ryzen APU would never run would would never run at full performance. Whereas in his well, he says the Bristol Ridge will, because that thermal thing. I'm not an engineer, but he knows what he's talking about, you know. Uh, and he's not bullshitting either. I mean, we know when someone's bullshitting, even even if they fucking type it down, because this guy has over twenty years of experience for this. I'm telling you. It, if the the entire VCS couldn't be in my better hands, judging by what I'm reading here. Right, so um so when the Ryzen is now this is the other APU, the Ryzen APU, what R one is, is having the Bristol Ridge and according to hit Robert the the Bristol Ridge is we run at full performance. Okay. So when the when the Ryzen is operating in a thermal limited environment, uh its performance is only marginal be marginally better than the Bristol Ridge. Okay, we we figured any additional cost would be better spent on um, more memory in an optimal bank layout to maximize bandwidth, as this benefits everybody all the time. Okay, now I'm not, I'm not an engineer, but that, all that sounds fucking great to me. I'm not exactly sure what he's talking about, but I'm sure someone would. Who, who has any idea what, what that means you know what I mean but that's what it is I mean he's not bullshitting here uh, so yeah so um, 
Yeah, so memory. Better spent on my memory. My memories are always good. Maximize the bandwidth. Yeah, agree. Okay, so, yeah. Um, a terminally limited but higher performance APU has some performance here. Here and there, but it's not a universal gain, you know. Uh, we will continue to maximize the terminals to allow the Bristol Ridge APU to run at maximum speed. Awesome. Now, now that was the second question, right? Here's the third one, right? It's about the controllers, right? In addition to the new Atari joystick and modern controller, what kind of controllers and input devices do you expect to be compatible with the Atari VCS, the like Xbox, DualShock, Fire, Mouse and Keyboard, etc? And he answers, uh, the Atari Classic joystick and the Atari modern controller are standard USB human input devices. At the, at the system level, at any compliant human input device is supported, including game controllers, keyboards, mice, and even other devices that don't yet exist. So stuff that isn't even doesn't exist will work on it if the Bluetooth device, which is fucking awesome. And the uh, human input device, that's a uh, USB, you know. So if it has a USB, uh, yeah, it'll work on it. Fucking awesome, even stuff that, that doesn't even exist yet. Um, so yeah, so including game controllers, keyboards, mice, even other devices don't, don't exist yet. Um, applications can operate at this level, but they need to understand the uh, specific device, you know. So that means, like, uh, like, um, like not every device, like, it could take a while for the system to understand the, the specific device, but it will work. Like, um, other things will work better and faster. That's what that means, you know. No, yeah, but it will work. It will work if it's a Bluetooth device and it has a USB. Yeah, you know. Sweet. So that's not the end of it. Right? So he says to ease the burden of uh, to ease the burden for applications using game controllers, the Atari OS will start will have standardized controller support, which includes a built-in controller remapping tool, which is fucking awesome. This tool will will allow you to remap physical controller buttons. To logical standardized buttons, remap analog inputs and apply curves to the to get the exact response and feel you want, as well as allow as allow for the, the lefty joystick that some of us was for. This tool will let us use any controller, and the applications always see a standard controller with your own button mapping. That's fucking awesome. You can map your own buttons any way you like. If you're a lefty, whatever, fucking awesome, you know. Uh, the button mapping data can be stored per, per controller, per user, and or per game. So it doesn't matter, we can, we can change the button maps to any game, it doesn't matter, anything. That's fucking deadly, you know. Uh, and, can, um, and can also be exported and shared with other with, with, with with users. So you can, you can give your button maps to someone else if they. Don't want to take the time to, to map out the buttons themselves. You know, you can you can you can you can customize it any way you like. Which is fucking awesome, you know. So you, you got you continue with the original Atari twenty six hundred the, the the original Yeah. Uh, it, it's time for me down already. Yeah, I'm coming. We'll, we'll uh, continue on now in a minute, yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll continue later. I'm just going for my dinner, and then we'll continue. So hold on, please, eh? We're sorry about that. Right? We'll just finish off with update 6 for the Atari VCS, right? So he's on about the, the, the original Atari 2600 joysticks and analog paddles are not directly compatible with the Atari VCS. The Atari VCS, although retro and spurred, it's not a retro box, and the old input devices don't have functionality needed for the new system. If you really want the retro experience and want to use original joysticks, then there will be a solution in line with remaining as open as possible. An enterprising and user could use the Arduino skills and make an interface board. This board would uh, declare itself as a U USB um, HOED game controller to the VCS and read uh, uh, a vintage 9-pin Atari joystick. 
Then you can use the system be mapping tool to assign the buttons paddles as necessary. Maybe we'll do this in a future post on open source um, the design as then it can be used as a reference design for custom input devices. Again, I'm not an engineer, I'm just reading what's saying here, but uh, the original Atari uh, 26 won't work yet. Well, someone could design something that'll make it work for it. Like I said, there's going to be no barricades. You can you can make something that I'm, that, that the, the joystick will plug into. You know, this day and age, you could probably mod it, modify it. But you, people fucking modify our stuff all the time, you know? To get it to work on new stuff. So all the stuff, this is awesome. So, if someone has the skills to modify this high VCS to make the old joysticks work, it'll work. And then you can use the, the uh, button remapping uh, thing so it'll work on the games in the Atari VCS. That's awesome. Multitasking. Doing an update when I'm eat, eating my dinner. Beans and you know? Well, I don't have a, lot, a whole lot of time in my hands, you know, so, update 6 and on, so, hold on, a lot of stuff, and this is just the first um, Q&A, there's going to be more, more updates to come, so we're, we're still a long way out, but it's getting there, you know, it's getting there, you know, so, we, so, um, the uh, light gun for the Atari 2600, for the Atari 2600, um, or and any, wait, the Atari, the light gun for the Atari 2600, and in fact any analog light gun, is never going to work with a modern TV. Which is true, you have to have an old scale telly. It will require an entire separate post to explain. The numerous reasons why old fashioned light guns are problematic, yeah, because you have to have an old school telly, which is true. But it's not that many games that support the light gun, so it like, doesn't really matter, like, you know. You know. Yeah. Yeah, being the goof the heart, you know. But you also make a fart. <laughs> the rhymes. But it's true though. Beans, beans are good for the heart. The more you eat, the more you fart. Hmm. Which is true. And I'll just must seem disgusting eating my dinner, but like I said, I haven't got a whole lot of time in my hand. I don't want just to go cold. Unless people like eating cold dinner, but we don't, you know. Right. So, I wonder what all you fellas think about it. You know, you know, especially the people that are saying now, I wonder what, they, what they're going to say. You know, but if if someone hates it, there's nothing we, we can do to change our mind. They've, they've made up their own mind. They hate it, and... They want to be right, you know. They don't want to admit that they were wrong, you know. But look, I said this is reality, fellas. You know, so so that's the um tour question. Now this is the fourth one, right? It's about VR and AR, you know. Can can you say anything about AR, VR, and the Atari VCS? Will there be com compatibility at launch or beyond? He he says. Not, mu not much to say at this time, other than we have AR, VR plans, but it will be an after launch feature. More info to come on this somewhere down the road. So, like, you know, I doubt that it will ever play VR games but, or AR games, but if it did, it would be fucking awesome. But again, it's not, for me, it's not really a necessity. I don't need the entire VCS to play um, VR, AR games. But if it could, yeah, fucking great. But as you said, it's, it's, there's nothing at the moment. But who knows? Maybe there in the future. But I don't I doubt it. I don't think it's powerful enough to do VR games. 
but because that's something for me. You know, some people might be pissed off at the fact that you can't do VR games right now, and we fucking back out with the whole thing. But we don't need the Atari VCS to play VR games. Well, that's me. That's me. That's just my opinion. You know. Hey. Okay. Oh, this is question number five. Um, how and when can developers get on board and start creating games for the Atari VCS? Will there be any SDK or dev tools or dev tools available? We won't have dedicated development. We we won't have dedicated development hardware. You won't need it. Any Atari VCS device can be a development kit. All you have to do is sign up to our developer program, download the SDK and start creating. If you don't want to develop in native code, then common game engine platforms will be available for the Atari VCS. Now, we have no idea what any of that means because I don't know how to make games, but if anyone likes making games or know how to make, or know how to make, or knows how, make a game that probably sounds awesome but you can use the VCS as a development kit you don't have to get a separate hardware to develop games so you just have to get Atari's permission to make a game and use the Atari VCS which probably sounds cool you know uh, but he, he, got, he, he continues to get any application into the Atari star uh, there will be a few technical requirements and rules as to what is permissible um, as we are curated stars, indecent and offensive material will be pro prohibited. Our content will be appropriately age, age rated and subject to parental controls to ensure users of all ages only see decent and quality applications. So, I doubt you'll see something like Grand Theft Auto on or something, but if you did, it'd be fucking awesome. But they don't, they don't allow that sort of shit, you know? Um, which I suppose is a pain in the bollocks, but you had to make a family, family friendly, I guess. Yeah. Well, again, like, the, the whole creating games thing is awesome. Well, for me, like, it's, it's not a necessity either. Well, it says people out there that like making games or like, or like to make their own games. If you tell you, we see you can do it. And I doubt that Harry will charge you. Well, um, Charge a load of money to do it. I don't know. No. Oh. That's with the Atari 2600. Loads of fans made, made games for the Atari, for the Atari 2600. Long after Atari um, stops apart the, the, the 2600. No. I hope the same thing happens with the Atari, with the Atari VCS and it will. No. I say people that make games for it. No. Because the Atari aren't putting up any, any barricades. No. All it takes are people that like making games to put in the time to do it. No. Well, I'll continue. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Wait, um, everybody keeps doing that. Wait, um, wait, um, okay, it says, uh, Atari is a neutral partner and we have no say in, in what applications get developed. Or when an application gets released, you are free to develop any application you like as long as it's within our guidelines. So, no, no, no course, no sex, nothing offensive. No, so at this time, the, the developer program is not yet open and it will come online in the coming months. 
if you have any uh, application in mind, you can start today, make sure it runs on Linux at HD resolution and using standard runtime libraries. Uh, the changes from this to the to the changes from this to the Atari OS will be minimal and mostly related to application startup and application packaging. In the very near future we will release documentation of the Atari OS which will detail all the runtime components we support as well as libraries for Linux that mimic the Atari OS. Okay. So um if you, I don't know if that's good news or bad news if you like making games. Uh, but it's not ready yet, you know what I mean, but like, um, um, yeah, I mean, it, it will be av available, I mean, but, um, I don't know if that's good news or bad news about making the games, but, you know, it's not ready yet, okay, it's a long way to go, fellas, you know, it's a long way to go, you know, but say, when it, when it, when it, when it gets released further down the road, let's say 20, let's say 2022, let's say by then, the Atari VCS will be out long enough to be established. People will know how to make the games for it and how the whole process works. Okay. Okay. So, um, here's question number six. And there's loads left to come. This is, this is, the, first, this is just the first Q&A session. Can you please explain your vision for the Atari VCS open platform and sandbox? You know, hold on. I hope I'm not pissing anyone off by doing this, but I'm gonna eat my dinner now. <laughs> eating bacon right now. Look bacon. Mm. Eating beans, bacon, and mashed potatoes. Oh, but, uh, great gravy, you know. Well, some people might not like to mix your baked beans and gravy, but I do. And the potatoes are awesome. Yeah. And it's so, it's so easy to make. You know, baked beans. You know. Bit of gravy. Bit of mashed potatoes. You have it made in less than an hour. And it's tasty. Let's go for the heart. Hey. Hey. Well, sorry about that, but I had to eat my dinner. I didn't want to go. I didn't want it to go cold. Some people might like eating cold dinner, but we don't. Sorry about that. We'll just finish off with this update, you know. Sorry about that. I'm just an amateur, you know what I mean? I'm not a professional YouTuber or anything by any means. You know, I'm just an RD guy. I don't have a whole lot of time in my hands before I go back to war. And so, I'll just finish off with um, this update 6 from the Atari VCS. Uh, now, uh, now, uh, in, but to sum it up, I'm pleased with what I'm reading here. Uh, the whole making the game thing seems a, still a bit in the dark, but there's going to be more Q&A sessions to come and that will get cleared up as time goes on. You know? so, so, next question is, can you please explain your vision for the Atari VCS open platform and sandbox? And, you know, this is a question that we'd like to answer, uh, we actually asked. You know, and uh, it says, um, since game consoles and various set-top boxes have existed, people have wanted to have wanted to play with them, modify them, and recall for them. This has traditionally been met with enormous fists from the platform owners, who maintain uh, high and artificial barriers to uh, to enter their platforms. Any attempts to circumvent the platform security is met with lawsuits rather than solid engineering. Everyone has heard the, the traditional arguments of platform security and user experience as the reasons why the barriers exist. You know, which is bullshit. You know, you can have like, 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 like Microsoft put, put, put up these fucking barricades. You can't do this, you can't do that. You had to pull it from our store and, and this and that. 
you know, so. In reality, the reasons why platform holders maintain toy control of their platforms runs much deeper than user experience, you know. Now, this guy knows what it's all about. He was there from the original Xbox, you know. Uh, first and foremost, if the console is sold at a loss, the platform holder's business model assumes you will buy a certain amount of content or peripherals to recoup the loss, which is what happens. If the consumer installs Linux and doesn't buy any additional products, uh, then that money is lost and the platform holder gave it to you. You know, gave you a gift. The platform holder ga it, it gave you a gift. Now, uh, um, we've had an Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and we have never been given a gift. Nothing for free. There's always something attached to it, you know. And that's one thing that's really the, the um, uh, now the yeah you get free games and games are gold, but you had to pay for the gold subscription. So there's nothing really free, you know. We've, we've never getting it. We've, we've never given a fucking gift. Now and um, you know, with the Xbox, the Xbox Three Sixty, the Xbox One, over twenty years and the. Like, We've never got nothing for free, nothing from Microsoft. So, uh, like that's fucking funny, you know. But like, uh, but if someone, you know, that's one thing that really makes me fucking laugh, you know. We've heard uh, fuckers saying, "I got this for free," and the Xbox One, I got that for free. Yeah, you were given it. You didn't. You know, it, there's no like, if someone gives you something. Someone had to pay for that somewhere along the line. It, there's no such thing as free. You know, like, I got, I got this for free, I got that for free, you were given to it. Someone gave it to you as a gift, that's what he's saying here, right? And that, that so, somewhere, along, somewhere along the line, someone had to pay for that. And it wasn't Microsoft, you know, fucking hell. Anyway, that's fucking funny. Yeah, but he's just explained how it works and why you can't download uh, Aminars and stuff like that, because Microsoft... You know the story. I don't have to tell you, but he, he he's just laying out and playing English. We so we'll, we'll continue. We um, we Microsoft learned this the hard way uh, on the first Xbox. People would buy an Xbox hack, uh, and uh, people would buy an Xbox, an Xbox hack it and install XMBC. It was a fantastic media player, but Microsoft lost a fortune. I remember that, like, you know. Uh, another reason is they, they really don't want competition. Who fucking does? Uh, the last thing a, a platform hauler wants is a game you can download for free, which fucking happened lots on, on the Xbox and the Xbox 360. You know, because Microsoft, and it, there's loads of hackers out there that don't want to pay for shit. And if you put barricades and 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 antagonize them, they're gonna do it, and they did do it. You know what I mean? They like, you know, so like um, but um, uh, at the end of the day, it benefits nobody. You know what I mean? Uh, but somewhere along the line, someone has to pay for it. You know, and yeah, I remember that. Like, uh, like, uh, anyway, yeah, but um, anyway, um, we'll continue. Uh. Yeah, the last thing pl platform holder wants is it you can download games for free or worse, buy it from someone else. That runs on <laughs> uh, yeah. That that runs on an operating system they don't control and it's better than content they have in their own star, which is true. When Sony experimented with Linux on PS3, they never provided any access to the GPU, so you couldn't be able uh, to make compelling 3D content to compete with their own, of course, you know, you know, at least they don't want competition, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean, um, in fact, their hypervisor explicitly blocked the GPU so, so you couldn't write a new GPU driver even if you wanted to. So, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, but I say people f f found ways around that, you know. Uh, a platform holder really needs to be neutral. Really needs to be a neutral party to eliminate political or competitive reasons for restricting content. Too many times, a good third party game has been rejected or delayed simply because there is a similar content coming out 
from a fourth party team. Because fourth party teams, now they it's their system, so they call the shots, you know. Um, it, a developer should never have to compete with the platform holder, you know. The public should decide which game they want to buy, and that is only possible on an open and neutral platform, which is what the Atari VCS is. Uh, it's also not unheard of that a platform holder restricts some type of ser restricts some type of service or media formats because uh, they have their own competing formats. Yeah. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, uh, there's no reason why a console cannot be neutral, open, and secure at the same time. You know, that's the thing. You can't have it both ways. Uh, but uh, you know. It, it, to make it secure, you know, yeah, that's a thing. A more modern business model ensures all parties can be successful. How are we going to do this with the Atari VCS? You know what I mean? Because, you know, how are they going to make it open and secure? Well, the answer is the question. Our car architecture consists of the Atari Secure Hypervisor and a heavily modified Linux kernel called the Atari OS. All of this is in, the, is in, is in flash memory and before the Atari OS loads, any external storage device is checked. And if a bootable if a bootable device is found, the other OS the other OS on the on that device is loaded instead. You know, so uh, like if you have a, if you have a hard drive or something like that connected, it'll read that in before the Atari OS kicks in. You know. Uh, we don't have a yeah. We don't, uh, we, hold on, uh, we don't have uh, a typical OS loader like U-Boot or Grub. And because the CPU is already in 64-bit protected mode from our boot code, the other OS will need its typical startup code changing. These changes are minimal and will provide um, example code to show how to configure and build the standard Ubuntu. Uh, the other OS is running under the Atari Secure Hypervisor, but the other OS has full access to the G CPU, GPU, memory, audio, USB, network, display, etc. And you can make full performance applications without restrictions. Now, I'm not, see, I'm not an engineer, but that all sounds fucking awesome to me. You know what I mean? I don't fully understand it because I'm not an engineer, but like anyone who understands the, 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 the technical side of it more than I do, should be doing a backflip right now. This is fucking awesome. This is why the Atari VCS is going to be awesome. You know, uh, you know, uh, it is. Now, that's just my opinion. You know, I'm, because I'm not an engineer, but uh, we can understand that it's going to be, you can do whatever you want, and but it's going to be secure as well. You know, this is going to be a fucking a revolution of a console. You know, that's what it is, you know. No barricades, flexible. There's no, there's no, you can't do that, and they're not going to judge you. It's your console. It's our console. These are the questions that we are asking, and I tell you, a fucking Rob, we're a fucking delivering here. It's going to take time to make, fellas. I know it's not ready yet, but it will be. Okay, so, um, so continue. So it's going to time for ages, but. While you are in the Atari world, running the Atari OS, you are in a secure world. From here you can buy games with secure credentials, play online without cheating, utilise parental control, streaming, stream 4K media, and it's fucking awesome, and utilise all other things you can do on a traditional game console. So when you start up the Atari VTS, the Atari OS kicks in, the star, everything else, the, the stuff that we saw in the UI video, all that will automatically come on. But if you plug in a, an external uh, hard drive that has games that are like that, you'll switch over to that. Okay, so uh, we, um, we, okay, here we go. While, while running other OS, no Atari services are provided. The device is no longer an Atari. The device is no longer an Atari device. It's your device. To do with as as, as what you wish. Okay, you can emulate um, like games. You can download stuff. You know, uh, 
you'd have an external hard drive or get it from the internet. You know, you, you can do it what you wish, you know. Uh, if you wish to return to the Atari world, you know, if you want to go back to the, the way it was with, with the Atari Star and the Atari Vault and all that, you know. If you wish to return to the Atari world and use the Atari services, then simply reboot the Atari OS and everything will be as you left it. Which is fucking awesome. You know what I mean? That's fucking awesome. Now, uh, the tech savvy people would understand that better than I would, but we'll get the gist of it there, you know? Fucking awesome, you know? Uh, it is up to you to make the Atari environment compelling enough that the natural place to go for content is the Atari VCS star. You know what I mean? We will do this by, adding, by having a fantastic user experience, sound business practices, great publishing support with novel and compelling content. And they will. You know what I mean? I, I think this is a, the people that love Atari won't steal shit from them. But it, I mean, the, 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 see, it's not about stealing. Uh, see, I, I use the wrong word. You can, you can, you can emulate stuff. You can get games. You can do whatever you want. But you can also use, the, the, use it the, the traditional way. You know, which would be awesome as well. So you can do whatever you want. That's the thing. You can do whatever you want, fellas. You know, it, it it's awesome. Now it's not going to be. I don't know, but this is awesome. I, I know I keep saying it, but no restrictions. Flexible. You know, you can, all, all I have to do is to reset the system and it goes back to the normal operating mode, you know. Uh, we never want to lose sight that it's your hardware to do with as you want. To keep saying that, you can do whatever you want with it. Okay, so if you want to download fucking Panzer the Goon, we'll say that'd work. Hope for the sake of certain, you know. But uh, once you do that, like, you, you, you won't be able to access the Atari Star or... Um, Play the Atari Vault. If you want to do that, you have to reset the whole system and then it go back to the normal UI, which is fucking awesome, you know. You know, and you know, and like, if you don't want to go back to the Atari VCS Star, you don't have to, but they say that they're going to put stuff there that so you want to stay, you know. This is the big, uh, big update, you know, but it's, it's worth it, it's worth it, you know, yeah. Uh, um, so, question number seven. We can ask. We, when should fans and backers expect to see the next Atari VCS working prototype? Okay. Now here we are. We, there are many prototype aspects to 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 a complicated product such as Atari VCS. Okay, different things will come online at different times. You you'll see working prototypes. For industrial design controllers, software and hardware all independently, one at a time, you know. It won't all happen at once, fellas, you know. Things take time to develop, test it, you know, you know, it'd be great if, if life was like Star Trek. You just walk up to the car and say, make me a tire VCS. I mean it doesn't work like that, fellas, you know. Each thing had to be independently tested and built, okay? Uh let's see. Only once all the subsections are functioning will a, a complete farm factor prototype be developed. Okay? Takes time, fellas. Takes fucking time. You know? And it will happen. I know uh, the nice her saying it'll never fucking happen. It will happen. This is reality. If you, believe, if you, if you, if you won't accept it or be hate it, we can't, say, we can't convince you of the words. And even if we uh, got a time machine, you still won't fucking believe it. You know what I mean? Like, you know? It, 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 and showed you right to your fucking face, you know. But anyway, um, so here we go. Uh, so listen to this, fellas. We all the nice errors, you know. That's who I'm talking to. Yeah, RGT, RGTA five, fucking um, uh, Smash JT, uh, fucking Jim Caskey, hot take. All you clowns out there. We uh, here we go. Uh, we already have prototype hardware up and running with the bristle ridge processor but the farm factor isn't final okay these initial bars are for de are for developing the build code and operating system testing games and applications measuring power uh, measuring performance power consumption temperatures and lots of other metrics they have 
they have lots of connectors and sensors that aren't needed in the, in the final product. Uh, we have also shared the, 